Hello everyone, this is Lynn Palermo from the Armchair Genealogist. Back today with another Scrivener for video for you. Today we're going to take a look at how to use comments in Scrivener. If you remember in our last video, we took a look at inline annotations. And um, today we'll look at comments. It's very similar to inline annotations, but I want to just go over um, how we can use comments and um, how they differ just slightly from inline annotations. So first of all, what you'll see on my screen here is where we left off with inline annotations in the last video. Um, you'll see that we've got some inline annotations set up and I briefly showed you how you can convert those annotations into comments. So let's just go over that briefly. Um, you go up here into format and we're going to go down here into convert. And in convert you want to go um, inline annotations to inspector comments. And click on that. And now it has basically um, stripped away all the inline annotations and it's made them into a comment. And if I just go over here and grab this and change this, now you'll see all our comments over here in the sidebar and stripped out of our manuscript text. And for some people, they really prefer to use comments over inline annotations because it's a much cleaner look. All it does is it takes the nearest word and it highlights it. So that is the only thing within your manuscript that you are going to see. So let's, uh, you would use inline um, comments the same way as you use inline annotations. And that is when you want to mark up your text um, either for revision or for critiques or for reminders, um, if you want to add character development or plot notes, um, if you want to make a mark as to where you want to insert a picture in a document, um, if you want to put a little reminder in about um, in a placement of some more social history or if you want to check a fact. So all the very same reasons that we used inline annotations for, we can use comments for. It's just a much, much cleaner look. So let's take a look at how we make a comment. So very easily, you just click on a spot. So let me just um, choose right here. And it will, you just come here to format and comment. And it takes the nearest word. And it grabs that and it highlights it. And then it brings up a text box over on the side. And in the text box, it puts the author and the date and time. And by double clicking in here, you simply can just um, backspace this out. If you'd like, you can leave it in there if, if you so desire, but you can backspace it out and um, you can then type in whatever you want. So I can just put in here, insert um, birth certificate. And I could just use this as a little note to myself that I want to insert the birth certificate at this point in my family history. By clicking out, you've saved it. And it's as simple as that. That's how you create a comment. Now, you don't just have to choose um, a word. You can choose um, an entire passage if you want. So I could take this whole passage and do the same thing. Format, comment, um, over here, double click. And I'll just backspace this out if I want. And I can just put in here, insert baptismal certificate. OK, click out, and we have it saved. It's that simple. Now to edit or delete these comments, very simply, you can come back in here, double click, and simply add more text or take away the text if you'd like. If you want to delete the comment, just click on the X and it's gone. And take that off and your highlight is gone. Like I said, very easy to do. Now let's take a look at the comment color. The default color is the yellow that you are seeing here. Um, but what is nice about this is if you decided, if you recall, and I'll just click over here for a minute. Uh, no, that's not what I wanted. Um, if you recall, Let's go back to our inline annotations just for a second here. Um, when we are in inline annotations view, so we're going to convert to inline annotations, we come over here, we had a little um, 
chart here with some initials that cued to us what we were actually um, highlighting. So for instance, we had a CF for a check fact, SH for social history, RR for research, you know, E for editing. And we put these little initials in and that were the cues of what we were actually marking that for if we didn't want to put in a, a whole lot of text. Um, if we go back again now to and convert this back again to from the um, inline annotations to the inspector comments, um, we can then, and I will go over here, so there's our comments again, but if we come back here now, oh, where did it go? No, oh, it's over here. There we go. So on this page we have, what I did is I created a little chart that shows us um, we could change the different colors. So for instance, um, in this one, if I wanted to, if I click on this and I get the comment, and then I come over here, I could choose whatever color I want this to be highlighted in. Um, you, there's more colors here, but it basically gives you your first popular six one. So let's just choose purple. So what happens is it highlights the, uh, the passage in purple, and the, also the comment on the side will be in the matching purple. Now, why would you want to use this? And if we go back here again, again, because we can then highlight the different passages based on um, what we want to signal ourselves to mean. So all our green ones could be marking our social history. All our blue ones are areas that we want to go back and look at more research. The red ones check facts. So it's, it's just a, a little a visual cue to you as to what that comment um, is all about. So next, let's look at the color in terms of um, how we can change this default color. Let me just slip over to the other page here for a minute. So here, if we want to not have yellow as our default color, quite simply, we're going to go into Tools and Options. And then in Options, we want to go into the Editor. And in Editor, you'll find a long list here. And we're just going to come down here to Comment Background. So right now you'll see it's the default color, which is yellow. So if we click on this, you have again a wide range of colors. So let's just choose something. We're going to choose red and we hit apply and OK. So now if I go and create um, a new comment and I hit format and comment, now it's made it red. So again, from here on out, any one that I make will be red. So it's just best to choose your color in advance, make that your default color, and then if you want to use the chart to um, keep track of all your, your uh, different um, uh, types of comments, then you can then uh, choose the, uh, the list to change them from there on out. But every time, if you don't tell it what color you want it to be, it will go to your default color. Now, navigating the, the document is quite easy this way as well, too. So if we come over here to our comment list, and let's say, for instance, uh, okay, I want to deal with this one right here. By clicking on it, it takes it, me right to the point in the document that, that, that we've inserted that comment. So that's very nice if you're dealing with a very large document, if you are writing a novel of 90,000 words or a family history, you know, 30, 40,000 words. It's great to be able to just navigate through the document very easily. Same thing as if you have something, if we had this all filled with comments, um, I may not necessarily know which one belongs. So if I clicked on this one, it's going to highlight right here in the list. Okay, that's what I, that's what I want to do here. So navigating document, very, very easy. The last uh, thing that I want to show you with regards to uh, comments is exporting your comments. Now very simple to do if we come over here to file and if we go to export and you'll see comments and annotations so I'm going to click on that and brings up this window and in it it'll ask you where do you want to save them so we have home desktop documents now within documents I created a file called Scrivener you can create a file whatever you'd like if you already have a file that you want to save it to then you can just easily click browse and you can go through your documents and you know find which file you want that to be then in here you can give the this document a name so let's put on here um, comments for 
Now, if we wanted to just print out the comments from this particular section that we have open in front of us, we would click on Selected Documents. By not clicking on Selected Documents, it's going to give us all the comments that we have throughout our entire manuscript. Include Titles, what that will do is when we, when we print out those comments, you will have the title of each chapter and then the comments listed below it. So having titles is very nice. If you don't have this clicked, you're just going to have a long running list of comments and you won't necessarily know which um, part of your story they came out of. So include titles, I think, is a, is a key thing to do in order to keep everything organized and you know what you're doing. Um, so then you just click OK. And that's, that's all there is to it. And just to prove to you that, that that exists, we'll go here to Documents. And I'll just slip down here to my Scrivener folder and open that up. And there you'll see Comments for. And it just gives me a Word document with a list. And you can see that the, dark, the uh, bold print is my chapter heading. And then it gives me the list of my comments underneath it. And so you would get this whole list in a Word document and you can easily print that out. And then that's a fantastic tool to have because you can now just take that list and you can move on to, to use your, for your research or check your facts or do your so social history uh, outside of your writing time. So uh, it's a nice little tool. So that is exporting your comments and inline annotations into a Word document and how you can use that. So that is everything that I have for you today on comments. Just a quick little video. Um, our next video is going to be a big one. It's going to be about citing your sources with footnotes. And I know a lot of family historians are looking forward to seeing that one and how Scrivener handles citing sources and footnotes. So you can look for that one in June. I'm trying to do one video a month for you. So June's is going to be citing sources. So watch for that. Um, this has been Lynn Palermo from the Armchair Genealogist.